welcome to Magatia Build All Worlds. So this is going to be a Burrows and Badgers Burrows build. Yeah, lots of bees. Um, this is going to be a little bit different to a lot of my normal scenery builds because I'm not necessarily building full on 3D scenery. Um, I'm going to do something else. I'm going to see if I can do it quite quickly too. The, see, the problem is, is that um, I've had a number of people, lots of people actually, um, get onto me after our second Burrows and Badgers battle report that we uh, uh, put out before Christmas. Remember the one in Benfield Yacht with the ships? Um, our campaign that we're playing, um, which has been proved to be great fun um, so far, uh, moves from place to place and has different warbands in it. And if you cast your mind back to the very first one we did, which is about the retinue of Sir Hartley Longshanks getting the package um, safe into Rebel Abbey, the game ended with the retinue entering the catacombs under the abbey. And we had every intention of playing a scenario where the retinue have to escape through the catacombs and tunnels under the great city of London whilst being pursued or tried to be prevented by a, another warband. Now, we haven't played that game so far because, well, we played the one with the ships, frankly, um, and we've been scratching our head about what to do about the catacombs and the tunnels. It would be a really easy solution just to get some, I don't know, cardboard and cut them out, stick them on a the table. Where would the fun of that be? I have got, because I'm old school, Warhammer Quest boards. Check these out down here. As you can see, these are the Warhammer Quest boards from 1995. I've got two sets on. I love this game. This is one of the best games the Games Workshop ever produced, as far as I'm concerned. I never got why people are totally into Hero Quest when they could be playing Warhammer Quest. Warhammer Quest, much better game. Um, the problem with these boards and similar ones, because last summer uh, you, I might have told you I bought Warhammer Quest, the Curse City game as well, and that's got loads of lovely card stock boards as well. The problem is, is that the miniatures for this, especially big beggars like this guy on his 50mm base, are going to get stuck in pretty much all these tunnels. Now, I know that part of the point of playing underground games is that they're tight and compact, and in some cases the big figures are going to completely block a tunnel, but a lot of the rest of the time... I want my um, terrain to kind of like be a bit more playable than that. The other thing is, is I want the game to make sense. Um, yeah, I can use, I mean, the, the old school Warhammer Quest tunnels, the 2x4 ones like this, or well, that's a 2x6, you fool. Um, they're not bad, they're just a tunnel. That one, uh, this one, and then there's the odd kind of corner, yep, uh, and stairs. They kind of work. The problem is these bigger spaces where you're actually going to have fights, they don't really work quite so much. Whenever you've got a great big room, it tends to have a statue and a load of lava and it's going to look really kind of weird where we're just trying to get out through the catacombs. So I want sewers and I want catacombs and tunnels and cellars underneath the buildings and stuff. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a go at making um, some low-rise dungeon scenery now there are loads of people out there who have done this i'm sure I'm, I'm there are bound to be other youtubers who have made this kind of stuff and i'm am in the least bit gonna look for any of them i'm just gonna crack on and do what i do we're gonna do it with uh hardboard and we're gonna use mostly five millimeter xps foam um underfloor insulation stuff which uh, is great because it's gonna be should be pretty quick i'm gonna cut out the large pieces i'm gonna draw paving stones and cobbles into it, that kind of feature and we'll see how we go. I'm going to try and make quite a lot of this as quickly as I can because frankly we want to get on and play the game and uh, uh, you know it might take a little while otherwise so I need enough to make an interesting underground layer on a kind of like a three foot by three foot table or so with big spaces and small tight compact ones so that's what we're going to do um, so buckle up and watch this one stick with me. Um, I don't know how many videos this is going to be. One, possibly two. Yeah, maybe. Who knows? Um, if it, it turns out being two, you need to make sure that you've, of course, you've subscribed to the channel. If you subscribe to the channel, you won't miss the rest of the build, will you? That's a very cunning idea. So uh, click on that subscribe button um, and hit the bell thing and all that kind of stuff. Um, and then, of course, at the end of the video, do make sure you kind of like leave comments and give me your suggestions because. Yeah, that's what part of this community is all about. So, um, and of course, if you want to support my channel, 
uh, more than just liking and subscribing and doing the YouTube algorithm thing, which it, frankly is fine. You could always have a go at signing up to uh, Magathea Builder World's Patreon, which is patreon.com slash Magathea Builder World. Um, I'm not going to say any more about that now because I want to get on with this build. So, um, yeah, what do we need to do first? Uh, get the toys out of the way, I suppose. Yeah, that makes sense. Right, let's get building. Okay, so for my dungeons then, I'm going to make a couple of test pieces. Uh, I'm going to make a sewer piece and a largish room. Um, and they're going to be basically hardboard with 5mm XPS foam put on the top and with details drawn into it. Um, I'm going to try and keep it as simple as I possibly can. Simple, but effective and flexible um, from a, use, a future use point of view. The cool thing about making this terrain, compared to a lot of what I do, of course, is it shouldn't be anywhere near as much bother to keep. I'll be able to keep a lot of it in one box, as opposed to small, large pieces in big boxes. So um, you never know, we might really get into dungeons just because it's an easy way to set up a table. Right, I'm going to start by measuring out and cutting out a couple of pieces of hardboard. Again, as I said in previous videos, this is not the very exciting part. Um, all you have to do, of course, is just remember, use a sharp knife blade, then you're less likely to slip and stick it in you and bleed all over the place. Change your blades regularly, people. Right, come back to me when I've cut them out and stuck some polystyrene on. Yeah, go away. Right, so here I have cut out three pieces of hardboard. Yay, go me, look at this. I said this would be fun. This one, uh, this, these are my trial, three trial pieces. I've decided I'm going to make... Um, uh, a room here. This may well be the kind of like part of the catacombs directly underneath the abbey, um, and this is um, going to have a set of stairs put on it. So I can either place that next to that anywhere I like, or maybe even in in the model here. So I'll have a set of stairs down there, down into the catacombs. And this board, so far, I don't know how well we can see those lines. It's a line running here and a right line running here. So I've got about 50 millimeters. Uh, here and only about 10 over here but I'm going to put polystyrene down this strip here and across here and this I'm going to have a go at making a, a trial piece of sewer so let's see how those work out what I think I'm going to do with this project is make these three bits for the video to see how they look and then uh, go for it from there what do you reckon leave a comment down below might be a bit too late by then I might have decided that's what I'm doing in this video but you know hey Right, oh, I am taking these indoors. Okay, so here are the two trial pieces. Um, hard balls up, ball on the base. This has got 10 millimeter XPS foam on it. I was, it wasn't until after I stuck this down and waited it down and waited all night, I thought, oh, I thought about doing this in five millimeter XPS foam, foam, but I think I'm actually going to do it in different thicknesses. This uh, has um, a waterway drawn on. This is going to be a straight section of sewer. Um, when I glued this down, I didn't put any PVA glue under this bit here. So I'm, when I've textured this, I should be able to cut down this line here and cut down this line here. Peel out, hopefully, fingers crossed, this section here and I should be able to draw brickwork in. This section is going to be either for the catacombs immediately under the abbey or it might be a cellar of a pub or that kind of thing the main thing the treatment this needs is uh texturing and uh then drawing in all of the uh paving stones that's going in there and i'm also then going to make a staircase that can maybe come down into it out of several levels of the uh, uh the 10 mil foam now the choices here are going to be about whether I make it so I can put figures on the stairs or whether I have realistic looking stairs. I haven't quite decided yet. They don't have to be super tall. They're there for effect and show where the staircase is that comes down from, I don't know, up in the pub or, or uh, um, upstairs in the abbey. But I'm going to make a set of stairs as well. So texturing then is what we need to do first of all. Texturing stonework. At the moment it's super smooth XPS foam and what I want to do is texture this. Um, now I'm using tinfoil roll off. Doesn't have to be super complicated. You don't have to buy or make um, rollers 
from uh, uh, you know 3D printing them or buy rollers to put your patterns and shapes in, and that doesn't actually help texture the stone anyway. So even if I was going to use a roller to put the stonework on, I'd still be doing this process. So I'm taking my foil and I'm basically scrunching it up and making it into a ball. Ball of tin foil, and then if you haven't seen me do this before, if you've seen Red Ball Abbey and all the other models, you will have seen me do this huge amounts. But if you're new to my videos, then you might not have seen this before. I basically take the roll of tin foil, roll it over the polystyrene over the XPS foam, and that starts to put a texture in there. We can just about see that. Um, that means that when we paint this, it will look a much better rock surface. Um, it will help picking up the, the brushing. A quick black undercoat and a couple of layers of grey dry brushed on and job done, we'll have a sorted stone floor. Remember, the idea of this particular project is that it's not going to take very long so every shortcut and cheat that I can use I'm going to um, then of course the whole point is is that it's not really a 3d piece of scenery 3d piece of scenery like on my other builds it's really 2d and any um, obstacles and that kind of thing will be separate barrels and stacks and maybe archways and that kind of thing that I make separately or I've already got in my scenery bits box I have a large collection of scatter terrain I'd like to thank next door's dog for joining in you can tell it's next door's dog because my dog's bark is much deeper right okay so how are we going looking pretty good And I'm going to do this on the sewer section as well. You can see after only a couple of minutes work, I've now got a much rougher surface that will look really nice to paint. The proof of course will be in the pudding. Taking off, just making sure I rub down the corners where I've cut with a nice sharp knife. I'm really going to enjoy making this because I don't have to worry about it being too precise. I'm not going to be super picky if everything doesn't line up real flush. Um, that's not what I'm going for here and I'm not worrying too much about making everything really, really modular either. Okay, there is my floor from a big room. One of the reasons why I'm doing this is because I could, of course, use Warhammer Quest tiles as I said at the beginning of the video one of the problems with them is the fact that you only get whatever has been printed and available and secondly you get them with a square grid printed on them which all right, makes no difference at all but it just makes it feel more like a board game a dungeon crawling board game and what I really want still is a war game so I still want to be able to wield my tape measure I know it's a very small difference, but hey. So there we go, there's my textured sewer. Now time to put my money where my mouth is. Okay, so this is only a 10 mil piece of polystyrene, so it's not gonna be difficult to cut. New Stanley knife blade, and I want it to be fairly straight, so I'm actually gonna use a steel rule here, and I'm gonna go straight down that one cut all the way through, and on the other side. This is a bit we see how accurate my gluing was, or not, as they say. Here we go. Thank you, Chewy. Let's get my rule under that. Yeah, rock and roll. There you are. Hey, look at that. So this bit hasn't been glued. And that came out nice and easy. I can put that to one side. There's a, 
uh, a two inch wide or 50 millimeter wide eight inch long bit of polystyrene there it's definitely going to get used to something else so i'll put that to one side and this now is becoming my sewer section um i need to see if i can get a bit of texture just in here and then i'm going to draw in paving slabs easy peasy then it will need mod podging and painting Okay, so I've got a bit of texture on either side here, just taking it off there. Now all I'm going to do is I'm going to take this pencil and this piece of polystyrene and I'm going to draw into the polystyrene blocks. Now, it's a very simple process. It's quite interesting how different people work with foam. Uh, one day I might lash out on a, a Proxon or another big hot wire cutter. But actually... The problem with those things is that what tends to happen is I've seen a lot of foam makers, model makers, making lovely, lovely models with stones and bricks. They've cut from XPS foam. Well, the problem a lot of the time is that, in my humble opinion, a lot of the stones they're cutting out are just way too big. Um, looks like everything gets made from breeze blocks in their world. Now these I'm making fairly large, but on the whole, well that's because the bars and badges is fairly large scale, but I tend to subscribe to the fact that life is just too short to be cutting out, slicing your polystyrene up way beyond where it needs to be, just so you can Stick it, stick it all back together. Uh, no offence, but um, I haven't got time to sit and cut out. If if model making, if the model making side of the thing was the only bit I was interested in, then maybe I would. But actually, I'm after a, a playable. In this case, a playable surface. So, um, it's not something that I really got time for. Who knows, I might feel different if I had a, a prox on. Ah, I doubt it, though. I, 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 most things I tend to see as a... I do want to get stuff on a table. And it's the way, same way I feel about uh, 3D printing. I don't want to 3D print my entire table. I want to use a 3D printer to print components. Help me out. I still want to make my designs... Not that the guys who are using Proxons and making all their amazing phone stuff. And don't get me wrong, they, there are some absolutely incredible models being made by people who are cutting out individual bricks. But, my word, I haven't got just, oh no, do my head in. If you watch me making fantasy buildings and putting roof tiles on, you know how much I hate doing that. Because it's kind of therapeutic, but mind numbing at the same time. And this takes even longer. So, uh, Drawing brickworks in, and it does look just as good. There we go, there's the stonework along the edge of my sewer. How about that? And now I'm going to do this side, and then I'm going to draw in the bigger paving slabs here too. So this is my trial sewer piece. Um, yeah, that's nice along there. I'm quite enjoying that. The walkway there, and this is where the sewer itself has got to go. So I'm going to apply a water uh, um, texture here, and for that I'm going to use multi-purpose polyfiller, shrink and crack resistant filler for all interior repairs. This could go up to five millimeters deep, um, which I don't need to do, but I'm going to um, squirt it in there and smooth it on and see what we get out of it. Basically, got to cut the top off first. Um, so, I've used various ready mix fillers before in the past doing this kind of thing. I normally like flexible ones because they don't tend to dry up as much. If you choose one that doesn't 
dry, it doesn't shrink, then it shouldn't, the board should be less warpy. So I'm just going to squirt that in there. Yeah, getting that. And then I'm going to find a suitable bit of off cut of balsa wood to help smooth that out. I'll see what we can do water wise. Let's have a look in a minute. Right, okay, so uh, <laughs> I painted it on. I squeezed it on, you saw that bit. Uh, and then I used this piece of balsa wood to smear it up and down, which didn't work very well because, of course, this stuff just sticks to the balsa wood. So what I then did was I took a brush and some water and I've kind of like smoothed it down. It's got some kind of bit of movement in it, not too much. And now what I've got to do is let that dry. Um, I'm hoping it's going to stay nice and completely flat. And then when that's dry, um, I'm going to uh, paint over it with uh, actually the Mod Podge Black Mix, which is all right. Uh, and then we'll be in a position to paint it and see what it looks like. We're not far off actually getting these two pieces done. I could have a go at... Um, Making that little staircase as well, I suppose. Let's see how it goes. Uh, yeah, cool. Here's the sewer tile then. I gave the um, uh, sewer for the filler. Uh, I painted, ended up painting that on with a brush, as we saw. And I've given that the same prime as the rest of it, which is uh, Mod Podge with black acrylic. Um, and I'm going to paint that a little while. I'm going to start on the stonework and on here too. Now, the whole point of this project is it's quick and simple. So I'm using uh, my standard kind of stone kind of um, paint recipe, which basically starts with a black undercoat, and I'm using uh, Citadel Mechanicus base standard grey, uh, which I'm dry brushing over. And the cool thing with this is the fact that now, when we're dry brushing this on here, that tedious rolling over with the tin foil ball comes into play because this really picks out the texture really nicely um one day uh, on my list of things that i really need to sort out from a hobby point of view is um airbrushing things which i really don't do uh, i think it's frankly it's just lazy that i don't airbrush things um but uh this could be the kind of thing that will work real well with an airbrush having said that um it's not working out too bad with a big brush. This is a Artiscopade um, one inch brush from their standard set, uh, which is um, um, they're all right for painting the scenery and bits and pieces. I, I've got to say that I don't think they're quite as nice as the, the small set that I did a, a feature on. Some of them are a bit dodgy. This is a good brush though. Nice big brush for painting. Scenery there, not getting any brush marks. That's pretty cool. And while it's not necessary to go around the edges, because uh, they're not part of the train, I want it to look nice all the way around. Now, of course, the whole point of this is it's very much just flat, featureless terrain boards that I can put scatter terrain on. I kind of like think that. This board, looking at it, having made it, is a good size for a pub cellar or something. And I think what I'll end up doing is dressing it up with barrels and sacks and things like that in a little while. And we'll see what it looks like. But... All right, so grey on there. Uh, and now I'm going to go for administratum grey mixed in with the uh, Mechanica standard grey for another layer. And I'm probably going to put three or four dry brush layers on here. There is room for the odd bit of kind of detailing or moss or, or kind of like goo or what have you. But on the whole, I just want to get them painted. I want to see what they look like uh, with some figures on top of them. Um, to see if it's a project that I'm going to extend and make more of. It's not very expensive. It's turning out to be quite quick, so... Here we go, I don't know how well this is turning out under the light. So this is a, a mechanical grey and an administratum grey mix. Then I'm going to go straight with the uh, administratum grey. And just for a bit of fun I'm going to add some Zandri dust I think. Some earthy tones as opposed to just grey tones. 
could, I suppose, um, get inside and put something into all the cracks, or I could, maybe if I go too light, I might end up with a non wash over the top or an agro access shade to get into all the recesses in the light there. This is coming up quite nice. So the texture of the um, foam and the nature of the primer means that this is working out really good. Right, go see her. No, let's go Zandri dust first of all, see what we get out of that. This is going to have to be light, this is quite a harsh colour in comparison. So I might mix that with my grate on my wet palette down here. I ain't even going to take some of it off my brush, I think it's done. Yeah, nice. Not over everything, but... I think I'm going to do a grey sear dry brush over the top of that. That'll help lighten it up as well. Look at that, real time painting by Timmy. Real time Magathea Builder Worlds painting, although painting with a one inch brush is probably about my, you know, it's like a fine detail brush for me, really, one inch. Uh, we all know how much I love the painting side of this part of the project, but that is coming up. Nice. Alright. Come inside. And I'm going to do exactly the same mix, I think, on the sewers, although the sewers, of course, I'll have to paint the sewer water slightly differently. <laughs> the sewer water, I can't help thinking it's going to look rather like Necromundan sump water. Alright, that's good. Uh, have a bit of grey sea just showed that grey sea to the camera I don't even think it read the tile yeah, try and go pretty light with this Nice, I do. Let's do the same with the sewers. Okay, here we go. I'm not going to bore you with all the details. I'm painting this. That's what we do around here. We paint scenery after we made it, of course. It's exciting, but it is quite satisfying to do this, so it's not going to take very long. Again, that's part of the point of this project. I don't want it to take long. I want to get a table's worth, at least three foot by three foot's worth of kind of like um, underworld kind of stuff done as quick as I can. So we'll see what it looks like in a moment. Okay, so now we're painting the goo in the sewer. 
Nice. Um, what have I done so far? So far, I've used... Um, I don't know what I've used. Here it is. Uh, Castellan Green as a base on top of the black. Can you see that? Can you see that? Can you focus on that? Probably not. That's really bad. Uh, yeah, look, I don't know why I'm bothering doing that. Uh, and then I also use technical sterling mud. Sterling mud to put in some... Get, well, it's sewer, isn't it? Um, and now, I've got to paint over the whole thing, I think, with um, a contrast paint. Play bearer flesh. We're going to see how this works out. You might think I'm making this up as I'm going along. And you'd be entirely right. I am. Uh, you know, not being a painting genius, we're just going to come up with and see what we can do. So, okay, here we go. Contrast, plague bearer flesh. How does that work then? On top of this. Should have cleaned my brush first. That's what we should have done. God damn. Okay. Okay, okay. Uh, no, it's going to give it a kind of nasty kind of tinge, really. Of course, it's going to be disgusting. Um, yeah, I need to be careful over the plague, over the um, sterling mud, but it's going to run in there. You know what? If this stuff runs down into the Tamesis, it's going to be disgusting colour. No wonder the water of the main river is so polluted. It's not, but the, you know, this is serious, and it's serious. It's got to look cool on the tabletop. It's got to look manky and gross, so. Yeah. How's that working out? Well, I'm going to look quite cool. I don't know where it's going to keep its gloss. Look, I might probably, I think what I'm going to do, this is when it's dry, is um, go over it with a gloss Mod Podge. I'll make it all look wet and horrible. Even over the muddy, technical mud, sterling, pooey bits. <laughs> Look at that. Successful and skillful way he's just dabbing that on, slopping it on there. Um, oh, that's alright. We're going to see how that dries out. Whoop. Does that look suitably sewery? That's the question you were after here. If they, we think that looks suitably sewery, leave a comment down below. If you think there's a better way of painting the sewer, also. Leave me a comment down below. I'm here to learn, people, as much as I am to do my own thing and entertain. Now that's looking a bit grim. Now I might use some Boltown Green and some Agrax Earthshade up here on this colour. This is kind of like slippy and sewer and it flows over and it's manky, so... Um, yeah. Okay, so... Oh yeah, what do we think of that then? That's kind of looking kind of sewery and gooey. Um... A bit shiny. I've got, I've gone up the sides. I'm assuming the water has often comes up out of the channel over onto the pathway and on the side wall, uh, which won't be difficult to replicate on other uh, floor sections. I don't think so. I'm going to leave that to dry now, and then the only thing I've got to do when it's dry is decide whether it needs a gloss finish, which I think it almost certainly will. And then actually, those two pieces of um, board are going to be done enough for me to put out on a table put a couple of bits of scatter terrain on and have a look at and then make a decision. And I'm going to ask you guys to help me make that decision whether this is a, a project worth persevering with. So, um, yeah, uh, keep your fingers crossed. Hold on, to, hold on to all your bits while this dries out and then we gloss it up with gloss mod podge. Nearly done. Last thing I'm going to do to this then is add a, a coat of uh, mod podge uh, gloss. Uh, which is going to seal the uh, water nicely and is going to give me a nice wet look. And then let that go off. And then uh, we'll see what it looks like. I think that's all I need to do on these two pieces. Um, and then we'll um, check it out. A very simple model piece of terrain. I'm hoping it's going to be effective. We'll have a look when it's all done. Uh, and 
I'm going to put some gloss mod podge on some of this green that's grown up, gone up over the sides whenever the sewer overflows. And a bit of slime, I suppose, because it could be so wet because it's all sewers. I could see all the whole thing, but I want to have a bit of a difference. So we're just gonna let that dry overnight. We're gonna see what that looks like tomorrow. Easy. Okay, so these are the two finished trial dungeon floor plan boards. Uh, this one over here then is just a big square. Um, obviously, it's got all sorts of things on it. At the minute, I've set it up as kind of like uh, the cellar to a pub. So it's got barrels of stacks and beasties can hide behind it and bits and pieces. It's a very, very simple thing. 10 millimeter XPS foam, stone drawn into it, painted over. It's cool. Here we have our other piece of terrain. Again, uh, this is just a trial, remember. So uh, that's an eight inch long piece of sewer section. It's flat. I can put on obstacles if I want. If not, it just shows me where the tunnel goes. Um, I've got the sewer, I've got the sewage, it's glossy, it's a bit green, there's colour poo, because it's a sewer. Um, I'm pretty pleased with these. What do you think? Let me know down below. Yeah, cool. So that then is uh, the end of this first video with this uh, Burrows and Badgers Burrows build. Two trial bits of scenery. Yeah, I know. I uh, the right to start, I had three, but I got lost making the staircase. I will make the staircase because I think that will look quite cool, especially on something like the um, the what's it called the the square board down here, the one that's currently the cellar in the tavern. Um, the purpose of this video then was to be a trial, to have a go at making a couple of these things to see how quickly I could do it and how effective they look on the tabletop. Uh, as to speed, yeah, pretty damn quick. I mean, it, it's a very, very simple build. The most complicated and longest part of this will be measuring out and drawing accurately um, the various kind of like bits of hardboard that are going to make the bases for these to go on. Of course, they don't all have to be accurate. They could be wobbly and curvy because a lot of tunnels underground aren't necessarily nice and neat and straight. Um, but uh, yeah, I, it's whether I carry on and make any more. I made two as an experiment. What do you think? Do you think they could be improved? Do you think they work just fine? Do you th Can you think of specific underground features I ought to make? Let me know in the comments down below. I think myself, actually, I'm very encouraged by this particular project. Um, I don't think it would take very long to make enough uh, dungeon pieces to make up a battlefield that's um, three foot by three foot or two foot by three foot or, or three foot by four foot because you don't need to cover the whole table. You're not actually covering all of that space. You're covering tunnels and bits and pieces. And the fact that it'll just kind of like picks up and puts down next to it makes it very, very flexible. What do you think? Let me know. Would you like to see more videos of this particular build, this Burroughs build, and see how the whole thing pans out? Or am I flogging a dead horse? Shall I just make a bunch of stuff and then get on with the, the battle report? Um, I want to make the battle report. I need a dungeon to play it in. This seems to be a good way to do it. Right. If you think, yes, I want to see more of this, then make sure you click subscribe down below. Um, leave a like and a comment and all that kind of thing. Helps me out. I'd love to be sticking more uh, subscribers onto this channel. I'm amazed that I get so many people watch, but I get so many people say, you should have more viewers. Well, share it out with their people and actually show it to other people and get me some more subscribers. That would be cool. Make sure yourself, you click subscribe. That way you'll get to see not only the rest of this build, if I make this dungeon, which I'm pretty sure I'm going to, you'll also get to see the battle report that gets played on it underneath the streets of London. Um, of course, there are other ways of supporting this channel. My, the best way to support this channel otherwise would be to join my Patreon uh, at uh, patreon.com slash build Royals. Um, there are a whole bunch of people on there who are supporting me 
for the price of a cup of coffee every month and uh, they get the chance to win Magathia Builder of World Built Scenery as well. So from that point of view, that would be really cool. If not, you just want to support me by liking and subscribing and sharing it around, then I'm down with that as well. Um, so make sure you come back and let's see how the rest of this build goes. In the meantime, thanks very much for watching Burrows and Badgers Builds with Magrathea Builder Worlds. Yeah. Right. Back to the dungeon.